in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed jeremiah chapter 9 Thus saith the Lord, Koinonia, hear me, body of Christ, let not the wise man glory in his wisdom. Let not the mighty man glory in his might. Let not the rich man glory in his riches. This, verse 24, is the pride of the believer. But let him that glorieth glory in this, that he understandeth and knoweth me. Our pride in this kingdom is more than the accolades of men, more than human achievements, as important as they are. The knowledge of the holy. This is what the generals of old had. They didn't have all the education. They didn't have all the prowess. But they had him. They sought him with their lives. I was in Lagos this afternoon and I had the opportunity to just speak with a few pastors before rushing down here. And one of them was a pastor in one of the old denominations. And when I met him, I said, tell me about a few of your people. I heard that God did mighty things with them. I didn't have the opportunity to meet them. And when he began to tell me some of the great things, I said, oh God, where have we kept your power? Where have we kept the grace? We read these things like parables but they really happen we need to restore a fresh passion unashamed passion unashamed hunger it says let him that glory and glory in this that he understandeth and knoweth me. Daniel chapter 11 and verse 32b. The Bible says, The B part, but the people, but the family that do know their God, they shall be strong. There is proof. I can know that you know God. There are two things that happen to you when you truly know God. Number one, capacity strength the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle the diagnosis is that your strength is small god you did not prosper me i will leave you it's a sign that you do not know him lord i've been a worker in church for a long time and you have refused to bless me i will leave you that is a transaction in as much as he has covenanted to bless you when you truly know god is a point of no return it's like an initiation into something that you cannot come out of. Capacity. They shall be strong. Number two is a promise. They shall do exploits. Not talk exploits. Not wish exploits. That anyone who pays the price to know God, it is guaranteed that you will do exploits. In ministry, in business in life and in destiny i submit to you therefore that the reason why we have so many well-meaning believers but there are no notable dimensions of the possibilities of god captured within our territory is because very few people have paid the price to know him it's costly to know god the price for all of god is all of you it's costly the price for life is death. It's costly. You have to look away from many things. That is the price. Oh, but when you find him, then the world begins to look for you.
when you find him then what you have been looking for begins to look for you when you find him all men seek for you let me quickly share with you the plan for knowing God you cannot know God outside of these platforms now look up why do I have to teach you the platforms because I want to bring balance to something now look at me there is a side effect when your hunger is not guided unguided hunger is what have delved people into Scientology delve people into witchcraft some sincerely because when you have hunger if your hunger is not guided within the jurisdiction of truth you are going to get into error there are people who it was their hunger for power and for more of God that drove them to the wilderness and they met with demons and met with spirits and came back with encounters that are not of the Christ listen very carefully because if we stop at just marketing a zeal and we do not bring balance to it then we also give satan room to take advantage of the appetite of people there are people who waited upon god seven days dry and what appeared to them was not god because their hunger was wild they started searching the internet for everything superstitious then they see a name that looks like God and they say it's an old Egyptian deity and in their curiosity they start studying and before you know it they have bought books they have bought all kinds of things I must guide your search hunger is dangerous hunger attracts everything God man Satan are we together years ago i finished then in zaria i finished a program like this and suddenly i saw a group of young guys just came and stood in front of me you know and one of them believed that he was an incarnate of one of the saints from the bible and then the remaining guys were like his protégés, his disciples with absolute boldness and confidence he stood in front of me he said he was sent you know because he felt he had a role to play I could see the sincerity in the hearts of these young people but I knew they were already in deception the devil capitalized on their hunger a preacher preached hunger but the hunger was not guided you don't meet God everywhere there are coordinates that guide your pursuit and if you are not exposed to it and your hunger goes on rampage the devil is ever waiting to quench that test and create one that will not be quenched Satan is an opportunist so they tell you you are going to be a prophet and you carry that prophecy and lock yourself for days Lord where is the prophetic grace and Satan begins to speak and you think you are being open to the realm of the spirit and you encounter a grace you are convicted based on your encounter but there is no basis for you to vet that encounter and so you can come out from that encounter and mislead yourself and mislead others did the Bible not say the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith and shall give heed to seducing spirits and the doctrine of demons it's in your Bible the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart they don't have to be evil they are just sincere people who are not guided there are some of you right now under the sound of my voice inside and outside following online you are probably already delving into that error I have seen people who went to lock themselves to pray because they wanted to know God and the next thing they had to take them out to the psychiatry have you seen people like that because they came up with all kinds of strange experiences and they believed that everybody had a problem except them only for them to wake up and see that they are under drips they are under medical supervisions something had happened to them there are people who had spirits appear to them and lead them to go to places and do things mimicking the christ and at the end of it listen to me just because god is mysterious does not mean his ways cannot be vetted 
there are indices that can tell you whether this is God or this is not so that people do not bring and you know we live in a world where the moment people create superstition around the things of God things like God said or things like this is a vision I had suddenly we become quiet no you can probe into anything using spiritual parameters I'm not teaching you to go and insult people I'm not teaching you to go and cause trouble for people but this is to supply maturity that we can know God constructively in a way and a manner that our lives would demonstrate that we have met the God of the Bible Paul said there is as it were many voices and that none of these voices is without effect there are people who the voice of death called them they thought it was the Holy Ghost they came out of their houses never to return again he leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. He leads me and guides me to the city of above. He leads me and guides me to my place of destiny. Very quickly, number one, the first platform, the first authorized platform for knowing God is scripture. Write it down, please. The first authorized platform, doctrinally speaking, for knowing God is scripture. Second Timothy, please, chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16. Let's hurry up. We have to pray. Second Timothy, chapter 3 from verse 15 and 16. It says, and that from a child, look up please, thou hast known the holy scriptures. It's not only God who is holy alone, scriptures too are holy. The holy scriptures, which are able to make you wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Jesus Christ. The Bible says all scripture is in your Bible, is given by inspiration of God and that scripture is profitable read with me for number one doctrine number two reproof number three correction number four instruction in righteousness the effect is in the next verse it says that the man of god may be mature the word perfect there does not mean blameless it means mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works this is the assignment of scripture all scripture not the one you like all scripture now please look at me from a historic standpoint when you read this Bible that was canonized by a group of people containing 66 books and sold by bookstores like Zondervan and so on and so forth that is more than you will find out that there are lots of human imperfections theologically speaking the old testament was written in hebrew and the new testament was written in a combination of greek and aramaic are we together now and according to the principles of translation there are certain words that um, have multiple meanings and you will find out that they have a formula that would guide their translating the bible and so many things were translated the way they were not accurately translated there is no doubt that there are human imperfections here this is why the bible does not say you should read it alone you are supposed to read under the influence of the holy spirit and when he the spirit is come the bible says the spirit of truth he will guide you truth can destroy even though it is truth the devil can use truth to destroy you if it is not guided the bible scripture is the first platform for knowing god watch this that means someone can get born again under your church under your influence and you can commend him you can give him scripture and expect that as he studies the bible he can know god what about god is revealed in scripture right please number one his character the first thing that is revealed from scripture about god is his character character 
Number two, for the sake of time, his methodologies. Every time we study the Bible to know God, these are the two things we are looking for. Number one, his character. Number two, his principles or his methodologies, his modus operandi. The kingdom has its way of operating. So I can judge all things by the character of God that is revealed in scripture. For instance, I find from scripture that God is love. For instance, I find in scripture that God is merciful. So I can judge everything, the prophetic word coming to me, the manifestation of a believer based on the reference of God's character. Everybody say character. There are people all over the internet, I'm not on social media, but there are people all over the internet purporting to be me, unfortunately and sadly, and they have extracted hundreds of thousands of dollars, if not millions of dollars, from sincere people. Are we together now? I was shown a platform with over 43 books that were written by Joshua Selman. I've not written one. Five star ratings. People were rushing. Now, listen, let me tell you. When you, if someone calls you for instance and says, I am Joshua Selman, can you transfer one million naira for the building of an orphanage? Now, your confusion or your deliverance will be based on your knowledge of my character. Are we together now? Number one, I am so busy. When I'm free, I'm sleeping. So the person who has that time to call you, there are times that those who know me, I don't even call at that time. If someone calls you at that time, you know that is a liar from the pit of hell. There is something about God you can know and you use like a reference. You can judge things and say, no, God does not behave like this. You can have the boldness to judge prophecy. You can have the boldness to vet an operation within a spiritual circle. Listen, the character of God is not the one you know. There is more than the one you know. I'm not talking of a denomination's approach to God. I'm talking of the knowledge of the God of the Bible. Are we together? Everybody say his character. So when Isaiah came to Hezekiah in chapter 38 of Isaiah, he said, Isaiah, I heard from God. Hezekiah, set your house in order. You are not going to leave. Hezekiah said, I respect you, man of God, so long. And he turned to God. There is something I know about God that his mercy is not his judgment. I knew every morning. And he said, God, but I can negotiate my longevity. If I die, who will praise you? And God said, ah, this man got me. David knew something about God. Every time God wanted to destroy him, he would sing his sins as a song and dance before God and say, Lord, are you not merciful? Music director, sing it. And God would say, what do I do with this man? Finally, he earned the title, a man after God's heart. David. There is something about God we need to know. So that the devil does not steal into your passion and lie to you. When you are broke and failing and things are going bad, the devil can steal into your sincerity and make you live a mediocre and a weak life and mentor you into believing that God can allow you like that until you start scripture to see the character of God that he who did not spare his son he gave his son freely without thinking about it will he not much more give you all things to enjoy that if you being evil know how to give good gifts how much more will your heavenly father so immediately you know that that thing you think is God is the devil because you have judged by the character of God listen to me you know why it is important to read your Bible? It's more than just easing the guilt of feeling that you are not spiritual. You read the Bible so that you are exposed to God's character. And then his methodologies, his ways of doing things. Let me tell you this. I don't mean to insult anyone, you know, I'm called to minister to the body of Christ. But there are many practices 
that may be sincere but we need to look at them from the lens of scripture in God's economy how results are produced are as important as the results themselves do not say it doesn't matter the most important thing is let there be results no there is a predefined methodology Jeremiah chapter 6 and verse 16 it says to stand ye in the way even that old path it says to ask ask for the old path where is the good way when you find it walk daring and it will bring you into your Sabbath hallelujah so we study scripture to know the character of God we study scripture to know the ways of God platform number two very quickly the second platform that helps us to know God in this kingdom are the names of God write it down please the names of God Exodus chapter 3 will start from verse 13 down to 15 Exodus chapter 3 this was Moses having an encounter with the God of the Bible in the burning bush until then he had not met the God of the Hebrews remember that Moses was raised an idol worshiper I hope you know look up I hope you know I hope you know that Moses in his hedonistic state wrote books Moses was a writer he wrote books that are still being used today books that teach I hope you know that Moses was tr being trained to be the next Pharaoh he was going to be the one to succeed Pharaoh For you to be a pharaoh in Egypt, you had to be half man and half wizard. They would teach you the art of the constellations. They would teach you how to make the stars. They would teach you to, how to align planetary bodies for your advantage. They will teach you how to manipulate the elements of nature. What do you think Janus and Jambres were there for? They were not just magicians, they were lecturers. Hallelujah. It was from that standpoint that Moses ran until he got married and was tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro and then the Bible says that he saw a bush that was burning and would not be consumed and Moses said I will turn aside and see this great sight and when the Lord saw that he had turned aside he said Moses take off your shoes for where thou standest is holy ground and then the encounter continued now 3 verse 15 please and Moses said unto God, Behold, when I come to the children of Israel, and shall say unto them, The God of your fathers hath sent me unto you, and they shall say to me, What is his name? What shall I say unto them? Because you see, God preserves his dimensions in his names. Don't forget this. Every dimension of God's glory is captured and preserved in a name. Every time he revealed himself in a certain way to the nation of Israel, they captured that dimension. If they saw his supplies, they captured it in a name called Rapha and preserved it. So any day they want to see that dimension again, they will invoke Rapha. Are we together? If they saw his deliverance, they called him Sebaoth and captured that dimension and hid it. So every time they were in war, they would study the situation and study what name of God representing his dimension and they will invoke that name. So Moses is saying, when I meet these people and I say I have come as a deliverer, they will ask me, what dimension of God did you encounter? Who sent you? And you see, Pharaoh also had names that were preserved. Egypt had thousands of gods and all these gods had their assignment and they respected one another. They were gods of fertility, they were gods of agriculture, they were gods of so on, like we have in many you know, traditions around Africa. We have gods that do this, they specialize in this area, that area. Each god has his requirement to invoke that dimension in him. And God said, give it to us please verse 13. Moses, you are asking what dimension of me you want to see. I am that I am. It's a very dangerous name. That means every other name they called me was simply your for your benefit. 
I am so mighty no man can fathom me but I decided to fragment myself into dimensions so that I can give men a chance to relate with me so Sikeno is still Jaira is still Rafa but he broke his dimensions so that we can know him the same way both man and woman I hope you know that both man and woman are dimensions of God he separated himself number one for procreation but number two so that the clearest expression of God demonstrated on earth will be the relationship between a man and his wife it was God's design that the first example of God children will see is not a film it's not a pastor it's daddy and mommy so mommy is a dimension of God that's the reason why her and the Holy Spirit is God who is at work in us both to will and to do that means when God wants to bless you the Spirit of the Lord will breathe upon you to invoke the dimension of him that should be made manifest all of him cannot show up you can't stand it no even in heaven he feels all things are we together so if it is a healing service God will move the worship ministers and they will find themselves singing songs that invoke that dimension they, they will find out that they are, he, he answers to his name the moment you begin to sing songs as we worship in your presence there is healing the Holy Spirit's gentle touch is blowing Jesus I believe the Holy Spirit does not start prospering when you sing that kind of song. No. He will switch to that dimension of God that quickens. And all of a sudden you find out that the dimension of God that is revealed based on what you invoked was healing. When you know this, it will help you to administer anointing. Because all of a sudden you find out that the worship leaders are singing songs that are around a pattern. They are being moved by the Holy Ghost because he wants to show up. And that's why as a worship minister you must be sensitive. Because there are times God wants to show up and he wants to use your songs to create the platform for him to come. Your spirit must be aligned enough to pick that signal. Are we together? When you watch men like Benny Hinn, when they are about to pray, they begin to sing all kinds of songs. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The atmosphere, the saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. And all of a sudden you see people rising from wheelchairs because they have created a portal for Rafa to come you know God by his names watch this that means if God calls you to walk in the healing ministry the strongest dimension of his names that you will know is Rafa he will create that bias so that you will excel in that dimension Are we together? Yes. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. The saints and the angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. Holy, holy, holy. So when God wanted to reveal a dimension of his living power, his El Shaddai dimension, he came upon men like Minister Prosper and suddenly said, the name is Ekweme. So he, what is it about a song with a name? And the name began to go from nation to nation you see and every time you sing that song with understanding he will answer to the name 
Listen to what you are singing. You are calling names. names of Jesus reveal dimensions of him next time you have a healing meeting don't sing songs about God giving people money you may be disappointed in that crusade because God will honor the dimension of him you are provoking sing songs that will cause the spirit of grace to come in the dimension you are calling if you are broke don't sing songs of healing for your body no when you are trusting God to move in many dimensions, you begin to sing songs like "Way Make Miracle Walk from the Sea, in the Darkness, That Is Who You Are." That's all right. Our time is gone. The last for tonight, and we'll stop here. The third platform, and it truly is the greatest platform for knowing the Lord, knowing God, is Jesus himself, the Christ of God. Colossians 1 and verse 15, we have to pray. Colossians 1 and verse 15, the Bible calls Jesus the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. Let me stop here for tonight. Let me explain to you what that means. That Jesus did not just come to save sinners alone. Jesus Christ came first as a correction to our interpretation of who God is. There are many things about God that men did not know because he operated in an invisible realm. So Satan and the mistake of prophets mixed together produced different kinds of views about God. When Jesus came, he came as God in the flesh. This is what the Bible calls the mystery of godliness. That God is made manifest in the flesh. Are we together? So I look at Jesus as a representation of the character of God. Everything Jesus did truly is what God does. Everything Jesus did not do, no matter who credited it to God, is what God does not do. Are we together so when the bible says god is love we can verify looking at jesus did jesus demonstrate love we see love everywhere based on the revelation of god through jesus we can agree that it is true that god is love god is a supplier is that true we verify from the life of jesus so when you study jesus Jesus becomes a theological reference for vetting anything that was credited to God, good or bad. Do not forget this. If you do not know Jesus, you will be confused about God. Because God in the Bible referred to many things. And there were times they used the word Lord, L-O-R-D. It was used for men, it was used for kings, it was used for deities, and then it was used for God, Yahweh. So you would need Jesus to verify many things that were credited to God. God had no business in it. As revealed by Jesus. So we look at Jesus and we learn God. We look at Jesus and Jesus becomes like a lecture manual that begins to educate and edit and reorient our understanding about God. No matter what which prophet said, no matter what which saint of old said about God, if it is not captured in Jesus, we have a right to vet it. Jesus, the revelation of God. Are we together now? Yes. He came as the word that became flesh, the living logos of the Father. We'll continue next week. We have to pray. 
rise up on your feet just pray a simple prayer in one minute Lord reveal yourself to me as I study scripture open me up to understand the character of God as I study scripture open me up to understand the methodologies of the kingdom and then pray reveal your names to me reveal your names that they transcend songs they transcend sermons and then Jesus reveal yourself to me let me study Jesus to know God let my confidence about God the integrity of his person through Jesus you have a right to vet every statement that has been made about God he came as the manifestation of God he came to end the confusion and the superstition around God hallelujah praise the name of the Lord watch this when Jesus came he revealed the father to us the love of the father he demonstrated the love of the father through the substitutionary sacrifice that he went through he said for God so loved the world he proved it that God truly loved us by giving Jesus and he says that whosoever believes in him that that person whosoever will not perish but have life everlasting tonight I do not want us to end without giving our precious people an opportunity there are people scattered inside outside following online from whatever nation you need this Jesus who came to reveal the love of the father he didn't come to make religion out of people he didn't come to make people religious people no he came as a testament of the love of the father very quickly you are here and you are saying apostle as you were talking about knowing God and all through the worship, through the testimonies, I have seen a need for Jesus in my life. Wherever you are, or you are rededicating your life, if you are here and outside, just outside the, at the gallery, you are free to come to the front here. And then, for those who are outside, please, all the old, over, other overflows, I would request that you move to the front of your projector screen so for all who are here carry your bags your Bible everything you came to church with as we celebrate you please make your way to the front koinonia celebrate celebrate Jesus come come to Jesus win that war tonight God bless you God bless you sir God bless you is there still someone who is saying apostle i want to win that war tonight god bless you leave your seat and come to jesus you may be the hope of your family do it for your destiny do it for your children do it for your children's children god bless you koinonia don't be tired celebrate them you're connecting from any and every nation you want to make jesus lord of your life follow me as i pray this prayer the overflows celebrate them there are people coming from everywhere the bible declares that he who will come to god he will in no wise cast away thank you thank you so much for making this noble decision listen to me it is the wisest decision that any man can make in this life to submit to the lordship of the christ and to be a recipient of his life I want to lead you in that simple but powerful prayer lift your right hand and please say after me those in the overflow please join them those online following join them say this truthfully speaking say this passionately let it be from the depth of your heart are we together say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I love you and I believe in you that you are Savior that you are Lord that you are king tonight I have heard your word I make Jesus Lord of my life be my Savior be my king from today and for the rest of my life I obtain forgiveness I obtain the abundance of grace the gift of righteousness 
and I reign in life. I declare that the power of sin, the power of Satan, the power of the grave is broken over my life. I am a recipient of the life of God. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, we thank you as always for these ones you have brought. May your grace keep them. Let this be a journey that will only be from glory to glory. I break the power of sin. I break the power of Satan. I break the power of the flesh from your life. And I declare that your path will be like the shining light, shining ever brighter, even unto the perfect day. The Lord bless you and the Lord keep you. I commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the Holy Spirit that he will guide you and he will turn you into signs and wonders in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Now there's a gentleman waving the, um, the, the placard up. Please, I'd like you to follow him and there will be a few people to just talk with you let's celebrate them very quickly hallelujah thank you for your patience in a minute we're out of this place um praise the lord dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message do not keep the video to yourself share to as many as you can to help them bless check our home page for more of our messages subscribe to the channel comment on it like it See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashkana Katabranda Katekatos. Katebranda Katapakotosko to break a take a legata. The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline. 